Welcome everyone to the Windows Server Summit. We're excited to have all of you here today. Building on Jeff's top 10 things to do with Windows Server, Amber and I are here to talk about the great innovations we have done with Windows Admin Center in our last couple of releases. I am Priscilla Aurora, and I'm joined here by Amber Guo, and we're both program managers on the Windows Admin Center team. For those of you that have never heard of Admin Center and are missing out on the awesomeness that is this server management tool, I want to give a quick introduction to it. Windows Admin Center is a locally deployed browser-based management tool that is designed to be the modern evolution of inbox management tools like Server Manager or MMC. It can manage servers all the way back to Windows Server 2012 and all the way up to Windows Server 2019, Azure Stack HCI, and of course, Windows Server B next. It is quick to install and takes just a few minutes to start managing your first server or cluster. An admin center is really designed to complement existing tools and to work alongside you know, System Center or Azure Management. It's designed to be managed from absolutely anywhere by installing the Windows Admin Center gateway on a server or a Windows 10 machine and publishing your gateway to the public internet. You can connect to and manage your server from anywhere, all in a secure way. Lastly, Admin Center is built to be your bridge to the cloud. Our Azure hybrid services are a cornerstone to connecting your on-prem servers to Azure in a seamless and efficient manner. And we're continuously building on all of our core tools with our announcement of Windows Admin Center v2009 just last month at Ignite. This is truly our fastest and most secure version of Admin Center, about 30% faster than any of our previous releases. We have built in support for Azure Stack ATI and Azure Kubernetes Service on Azure Stack ATI. And all of this goodness can be installed right now at aka.ms slash WAC download. Last year, for those of you that attended our session at the Server Summit or at Ignite, we outlined four large pillars that we would be focusing on as a product. Our core management tools, Windows Server role management, built for hybrid, and our partner ecosystem. And we continue to invest in these core pillars and introduce more features with every release. However, we realized that so much of our team's investment over the past few months has really not been on one of these four pillars, but instead something that spans across all of these or a pre is a precursor, a, a base, if you will, the cluster deployment base. Before using any of these tools that we have built for Windows Admin Center to manage your servers or clusters, we're providing intuitive and simple workflows to, to deploy these clusters. This presentation will touch on all four pillars and our base as we will slowly fill up this slide and talk about each of these core topics. Let's start talking about Windows Server Role Management. Since most people here are managing workloads with clusters, let's start with talking about what people do when it comes to cluster management. Here I have a two node cluster and I want to show you just the value and elegance we have brought with Windows Admin Center. So this, um, as I connect to here, Contoso HCI, is a two node cluster with eight total drives. Just 37 virtual machines, 18 of which are running. So even with two nodes, you can just see how powerful you can deliver an HCI system. And Admin Center makes it easy and elegant to manage. I can see, for example, my cluster performance, over the course of an hour, over the course of a day, over the course of a week, giving me quick insight into the performance of my system. Of course, let's focus on the Virtual Machines tool. The Virtual Machine tool in Windows Admin Center includes high-level Hyper-V host resource monitoring. Again, I have 18 virtual machines running, 6 that are turned off, 13 that are saved. And I can immediately see which of these are taking the most amount of memory, most amount of CPU. I can see I.O. performance metrics, virtual machine health alerts, and events for the Hyper-V host server or the entire cluster in a single dashboard. And of course, I'm going to be spending most of my time here looking at the inventory page. Admin Center brings a unified experience, bringing in Hyper-V manager and failover cluster man manager capabilities together. I can view all of the virtual machines running across my cluster, and if I want, drill down into a single virtual machine for advanced management and troubleshooting. Of course, given the importance of managing your virtual machines for clusters, we're constantly building on new Hyper-V management in Windows Admin Center. The first, although very simple, yet very useful change we made is a new drop-down menu. We realized that as we kept growing our management tools, searching through this long list got very cumbersome. 
So we did some research and grouped these tasks accordingly. And as we continue to add new features, these individual dropdowns will start growing. Next, I want to talk about our most requested feature for the VM tool, live storage migration. Under Manage, I will see the Move command, giving me the ability to live migrate the entire VM or just its storage to another location, bringing no downtime to the VM itself. Just as Hyper-V or Failover Cluster Manager did, live storage migration in Admin Center allows for redistributing due to new storage capabilities, defragmenting VM storage space, migrating from local storage to network storage, and many other capabilities that are common to IT administrators. This task takes just a few button clicks in Admin Center, and whether it is moving all your storage to one location or splitting it across various locations. Next in Admin Center version 2009, we bring in some new capabilities to manage the actual operating system of your virtual machine. Let's start with giving many people access to your virtual machine by joining a domain. Under the Manage tab, you will see a new button to join your virtual machine to a new domain. Normally, this task would require you to RDP and navigate to uh, the actual VM and go to Computer Settings, join a domain, and give other users access to the domain. Not anymore. By entering your domain and some credentials, Admin Center will join your running virtual machine to a domain, making it easy to manage. Of course, this often requires a restart, which Admin Center will take care of too. This actually leads us right into our next feature managing a VM with normal Windows Admin Center tools. Under Connect, as we saw before, users have the ability to connect in browser or download an RDP file. But something that really blurs the difference between OSs with or without a GUI. You're now able to manage your VM using standard Windows Admin Center tools right from within the inventory page, truly bringing complete granular management, configuration, troubleshooting, and maintenance functionality to your VMs running on-prem. And as you can see here, the, VMs, the VM is actually joined to the Redmond domain, um, just as we did before. And I have all these bread and better admin center tools at my disposal. Now, although I, I wish I had all the time to demo all the new features we've had for the VM tool, um, there's two quick ones I do want to mention uh, that I, I can't just demo here. The first is VM cloning. This task that would take over an hour of work using Hyper-V Manager um, can be done in just two button clicks in Windows Admin Center. The second is a new UI for Affinity and Anti-Affinity rules that is new to Azure Stack HCI clusters uh, and, of course, Windows Server vNex clusters. Next, since we're talking about managing clusters, let's talk about the improvements we've made to cluster-aware updates. While we have made incremental progress to improve the Cow tool, our biggest and most exciting feature is providing an integrated OEM update experience along with Microsoft Windows updates for Azure Stack HCI clusters. Now, when I'm using the, the update flow to update our clusters, there is a new step, step two, where our OEM partners are building snap-in extensions to allow users to update their hardware from within Admin Center. For now, we have this dummy screen, uh, but our partners are actively working to release their extensions to bring in these hardware updates part of Admin Center. So that's all we have for Windows Server role management, and I'll pass it over to Amber to talk about our core management tools. Thanks, Prasid. Hi, everyone. I'm Amber, and I'll be talking about the updates to our core management tools. First, we've released several new updates to our containers extension tool, including experiences around installing the containers role in Docker, as well as experiences around pulling images, creating new images, and pushing images to remote private registries, such as Azure Container Registry. To walk through the experience, starting on the Images tab, there is now the option to create a new container image. This experience makes building new container images easy. From here, users can configure specifics about the image they would like to create. Users can create images from static web application folders, Visual Studio solutions, or web deploy zip files. Building an image from a web deploy file was our newest update to the image creation experience and was selected based on user feedback. We are aiming to expand these options over time. To build from web deploy, users can select the zip file framework and specify their image name and tag. From here, they can see a Docker file preview, which provides transparency to the image construction process. Once the image is created, the new image appears in the images tab. Users can run this image locally from this tab, which can be viewed on the containers tab. Now the app is running locally on the host. 
Users can also push this image to Azure Container Registry to be pulled down or run elsewhere. We also have new updates to our File Shares tool. The File Shares tool has been moved out of the Storage tool and into the Files and File Sharing tool, making it more accessible for users to find. Users can also configure advanced settings, share permissions, and access-based modes. Users can also select to remove shares, which brings them to the File Shares Settings page. Here, users can remove shares and also configure additional settings. This covers our core management tool updates. You've also probably noticed a new color scheme from the walkthroughs and demos so far. This was to give our core product a refreshed user experience. Moving on, Windows Admin Center has also updated cluster deployment experiences. Deploying server clusters is challenging for many reasons. There are complex deployment scripts, with each scenario requiring unique deployment and troubleshooting procedures. Additionally, following best practices is essential for good performance. Windows Admin Center is making cluster deployment easy with a simple wizard that incorporates best practices by design. This wizard covers multiple cluster types, as well as a broad hardware ecosystem. One core cluster deployment experience is that for Azure Stack HCI. New updates to this experience include changes to networking, as well as experiences to easily register your Azure Stack HCI cluster to Azure. Windows Admin Center also has a new experience for Azure Kubernetes service on Azure Stack HCI. AKS on Azure Stack HCI is a new on-premise Kubernetes offering for Microsoft that is secure, easy to deploy, and consistent with Azure. The new Windows Admin Center experience provides wizards to set up a new AKS host on an Azure Stack HCI environment. Once this host is set up, users can deploy new Kubernetes clusters to the AKS host environment, enabling Azure Arc experiences and connectivity by default. More information on AKS on Azure Stack HCI is available in another session. This wraps up our updates to cluster deployment. Back to you, Prasid. That's awesome. Thanks, Amber. Let's talk about our partner ecosystem. Admin Center was designed to be extensible, whether it's teams within Microsoft building their own extensions or our OEM partners building new extensions to make hardware management easier. We have some amazing partners that are committed to updating and building their extensions. And we're thrilled that we have so many new and update extensions that came as part of this release. We have one new extension from Dell and two new from HPE. And we also have four extensions that have received new updates. One from Data On, one from Dell, one from HPE, and one from QCT. Building new extensions in Admin Center is easy, and we encourage everyone, not just our OEM partners, that are looking for new features or see some features missing in Windows Admin Center to build their own extension and email us to host it on our public feed. Visit aka.ms slash extendwac to learn more. Now the last box that we haven't talked about just yet is build for hybrid. And we have some very exciting new things to announce here. Windows Admin Center has been designed to be your bridge to the cloud. We have built simple, intuitive, and fast workflows to connect your on-premises server to Azure using tools such as Azure Backup, Monitor, Site Recovery, and much more. We have built so many integrations that we have a tool within each server to help you keep track of your hybrid connections. But our most exciting announcement is the introduction of Windows Admin Center to the Azure portal. Those same server management tools that you know and love are now available for you to use to manage your Azure IaaS VMs without ever having to leave the Azure portal. This new feature will be available as a VM extension for free to all Azure VMs running Windows Server 2016 and 2019. And since this will be on Azure, it will be kept up to date with our latest and greatest features. And you won't have to wait you know, for our six month release cycle to get our latest features. We announced this to private preview last month at Ignite. And we got a ton of feedback that we're working to address from support for private IP addresses and much more. We plan to release a public preview soon, so stay tuned. Jeff Woolsey will be talking about this more later today. Folks, that's all we have for new innovations with Windows Admin Center. And as always, please continue to give us feedback using user voice and follow us on Twitter at servermgmt to keep, us up, to, or to keep up to date with our latest news. Thank you all for joining, and I'm going to pass it over to Ryan Puffer 